Okay, so I needed a little bit of time with this review, and I kind of kept on looking over my notes over and over again to pretty much say that this card is really good, but it's not overpowered. So right now, we're going to be looking at Majesty Lord Blaster. He originally came out in BTO5, Awakening of Twin Blades. He was pretty much like one of the gatekeepers of the meta back then besides Dragonic Overlord and Tsukiyomi. And even in today's game when he returns, he he's still really good. Better even. So for his skill, Vanguard and Rearguard continuous. If you have Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark in your soul, this unit gets critical plus one. And if this unit is on Vanguard Circle, it gets 5,000 power plus drive plus one. Okay. So you, on your opponent's turn, you pretty much are at 18 gay base at pretty much all times. And you get an extra drive for pressure. You have, if you have another Majesty Lord Blaster, it gets a critical. It doesn't get the power or a drive or anything like that. So right now it's pretty much telling me that this deck can be pretty aggressive when it actually wants to be. And you most likely want to be most of the time. That's not bad. And you're probably gonna have one either blaster blade or dark in your soul. There's going to be another skill to get this off, but before I do get there, I want to say that the first skill is pretty much like a... I want to say it's pretty much a combination of both, Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark, between Blade getting you a critical and Dark getting you an extra drive. I see where they were going for with this. So for its second skill, Auto Vanguard. When it attacks, cost put two rear guards into your soul. And you get two imaginary gift force. I was talking about this with my friend Mario when he messaged me. He was talking about how this card pretty much broke Royals. I want to say right now that's pretty much... Well, this Masculine Lord Blaster is like, you know... What's his face? Um, something something 2.0. Uh, Mordred. He's like, he's pretty much like a Mordred 2.0. Basically. But the difference is between Mordred and this, Mordred doesn't lose his rear guards. This guy does. But in exchange for two imaginary gift force, I think that's fair. I think that's really fair. But mainly in this deck, you mainly want to go, well, force one. Because it's like, Honestly, as a deck as a whole, it doesn't really give you all that much power outside of Force 1. Okay, so let's talk about some pros. Against the last card, Revan, you should have a better time, since your stats will pretty much just go right back to normal. And honestly, with Excel as a whole, if you get like one defensive trigger, it kind of does shut down a lot of attacks. And it also may force your opponent to use Excel 1 instead of 2 to actually have a better chance of hitting. Now, since you have a rear guard Majesty Lord Blaster, even though you want to go Force 1, since the rear guard is going to get a critical as well, you can actually pressure your opponent if you actually use Force 2. And if you, well, pretty much if you get your opponent up to 3 damage already. One hit, and it's pretty much going to be over. On top of that, your Vanguard has an extra drive, so you're probably going to be playing like 8 crit. You can even play like, I don't know, 12 crit if you want to, if you want to use the, you know, the new Sentinel critical triggers. So the thing about it is also, and I was just thinking about this too a few minutes ago, as a recording of this video, 
If your opponent happens to get rid of your rear guard Majesty Lord Blaster as a crit, you can keep bringing it back from the drop zone because you have a card called Star Card Trumpeter. She brings blasters back, you know, from the drop. And she could be a booster. Honestly, even behind your Vanguard, this is like a 28k booster with a critical. Or 23k if you have a rear guard Majesty Lord Blaster. That's pretty good. This is a pretty good card, and I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I was like, oh my god, this card is broken. It's not really all that broken. It's really, really good, but I don't think it's too overpowered. Because pretty much of the deck that is pretty much in. What I mean is, like, Majesty Lord Blaster is pretty much carrying the whole deck by himself. The deck so far is pretty much going to be kind of vanilla. Not only that, it's also, it doesn't really have much of a good early game right out of the box. That's kind of my issue with it. And... You still, I mean, even though I did say it has a pretty much of a good trade-off, you getting two force gifts by losing two units, that's, it kind of can hurt, but then again, you get the triple drive, that's what that kind of does, like, lessen the blow of you losing units just like that by your own hand. Like I said, right out of the box, I don't think it's going to be overpowered, but I think this should, is actually a really good thing for Royals, and between this being aggressive and actually having an actual, you know, aggressive early game, I think Alt Miles actually got this covered. You may need to add, like, some cards to actually have a really good early game, at least close to a good early game with this, in my own opinion. But overall, I actually do love the card. I do. That it has Blaster in the name. So you can actually put this in a Messianic Lord Blaster deck if you want to. I don't think I would, but you can try. It's fine. You can search out Majesty Lord Blaster like repeatedly with, you know, you know, the order card. So that way you actually have maybe even three front row Majesty Lord Blasters, even pressure the opponent even more. But like I said before, I digress. I love this card. I do. I can't wait till it actually comes out. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the bell button if you want to be notified, and I'll see you during my next video.